Hello, welcome back. Uh, following on from the group head espresso clean uh, last week, today we're going to be roasting some coffee beans. Uh, for those of you interested in roasting your own coffee at home, we're going to be using this Jean Cafe CBR 101, which really is a brilliant little machine for for the money. It's about £350, um, and it's probably the easiest and the best and the cheapest way of roasting your own uh, coffee beans at home um, other than the popcorn popper and the frying pan method and and the heat gun thing which you read so much about but this is a proper machine dedicated to coffee uh, roasting then we're going to show you how it's done and a few little tips for the people who have got them already um, which I've discovered throughout the use of it um, just little things to make the coffee roasting process easier and uh, more repeatable right first things first we've got some coffee in the machine so let's have a cappuccino to start with. Nice cappuccino for starters. Right, we're just going to show you the little bits and pieces of kitchen equipment you're going to need as well, which come in handy. First of all, some oven gloves. Don't want to be burning yourself. A colander and a bowl for transferring your roasted beans in. Some kitchen scales to weigh out your coffee beforehand because you really want to be using about 250 grams per batch some green, nice green coffee beans, unroasted, and I think that's about it. Oh no, there's this thing. This you wouldn't believe it, but this is um, probably one of the most important pieces of equipment because when the coffee starts to crack, you can hear it popping. But with the whir of the machinery of the, the coffee machine here, it can be a bit difficult to hear sometimes. So, I'll just listen through it and you can hear the, the coffee crack a little bit better. Because it's the most crucial part of the coffee roasting process is the, uh, is the cracks. I'm sure most of you already know that. I said 250 grams of coffee because there's a little mark here for the dry processed beans. Uh, it's usually about 250 grams. Um, I know it doesn't look much, but when they start to roast, they'll swell in size. So you don't want to be filling this up about halfway and have it like bulging with coffee beans. So by the time this is finished, well, you'll see when it's you'll you, you'll see when it's complete that um, these will increase in size considerably. So let's get going. Well, there's a few tips that I always um, start off with, and one of them is to preheat the machine. Um, and what I'll do, I'll just put the camera on the other tripod and I'll show you what I mean. Cheers. So to begin with, we're going to preheat the roasting drum. Um, only for a couple of minutes until it gets up to around about the 100 degrees mark. Um, for one, it sanitises your 
make your roasting drum and two um, if you're doing different types of beans all the time and you're trying to make a record of how long you roasted them for it makes a lot of difference if you start the machine from cold or you preheat it because if, if you were to take this out with beans in there and roast another batch of beans straight away the temperature of this is going to be at the cooled uh, temperature so I'll show you what I mean we're just going to let it get up to around about 100 degrees like I said and then we're going to hit the cooling cycle which I think takes it down to around about 50, about 50 to 60 degrees so I'm sure many of you want repeatability with the uh, with the coffee roast that you do and this is one way of ensuring that because your you, you roasting drum will always be at the right temperature you can feel that's getting hot already so we're just going to let it get up to about 120 140, 135, 140 is a good, um, good guideline. And this will reduce the temperature now with the cooling air coming through until it gets to about uh, 59, I think it is, and then it shuts off. And that's the same every time. So if you do this to start with, like I say, if you're going to be roasting the same beans again next week or the week after, but you're doing them in different orders. It alters the machine's um, roasting time if you start it from zero. So it just makes it as if you've already roasted some and you're going to chuck some more in. It doesn't take long. It takes well, it's down to about 70, 77 now. These are centigrade um, centigrade scale so you can anywhere else in the world you've got Fahrenheit I think but here in the UK we're uh, we're still on the old centigrade or Celsius as it changed its name to now so you just have to do about a minute and a half a minute and a half and we've, we've done the cool down we got to 59 so we're ready to put some beans in and this thing just unclips from the uh, machine itself ready for the beans to go in see what I mean about that dry process line there but you, you'll, you'll see after they've roasted they will have uh, grown in size quite a bit then we've got a nice um, Guatemalan single origin to demonstrate this machine with so you'll clip it in there, you'll hear it clip you won't be able to pull it back out again and what we're going to do, we're going to set the temperature to 250 degrees C and we're going to set the time for around about 18 minutes because uh, I've not roasted these beans before um, I'm not quite sure how long it's going to take but we're going to give 18 minutes as a start the reason I do the 250 is because um, one of the little quirks of this machine that I noticed we'll get this started first before I waffle on so it starts and it's on 51 you've got 50 degree um, head start now instead of room temperature but anyway the reason why I set it up to 250 is that I noticed that 
is you start it around about 235 to 240. It takes a longer time to get to the temperature than if it was on 250, which is the highest the machine will go. So what, what I've decided to do with it was um, start it off at 250 and you can watch it rise, it's at 101 degrees centigrade, so it's pretty quick to get the temperature going like initially. But when it gets to around about 235 to 240, then I'll turn the temperature down to 238, which is the um, temperature that I found at this, this machine um, starts cracking the coffee. But I'll lift this lid up so we can see it roasting. But it takes a good 10 minutes or so for anything to really uh, start happening really. So I'll turn, the, I'll turn the camera off for now and um, we'll switch it back on again once we start getting up to the temperature. Right, as you can see, it's been going for eight minutes now and it's up to around about 221 centigrade and you can see the coffee beans uh, start to swell up in size a bit and uh, start turning a bit yellow. Right, we've had 11 minutes now just over and it's nearly up to 238 so we should start to be hearing the, uh, the first crack soon. So we'll be ready with the old tube. And you can see the temperatures flashing between 250 and 237. That's, that's basically the uh, 250 is what you set the temperature at. And 238 now is the actual temperature. So we're up to 238 now. So we've got to turn the temperature down to 238. and it will just hover around that um, temperature as you can see so we've had 12 minutes I doubt very much whether you'll be able to hear the crack through the camera one, because of the noise of the machine and two, the camera's just my uh, my helmet cam from my scooter and. Uh, the contour round too. Then I um I don't think the microphone's all that good. So we'll keep listening out and but you can alter any of these two things on the fly really. Um say you're getting to the end of the time cycle and you're not quite done you can just increase the time as you go. Now we just heard the crack there. It just sounds like snapping twigs. Plus you use all your, use all your senses for roasting coffee, you can smell it. And you can also see the smoke, you can't see it through the camera now, but the smoke starting to come through the, uh, the ventilation uh, ducting, which is just hanging out the window. Right, we've got the first crack going on now, so we're going to leave it a minute and a half. So when it gets down to three minutes, we're going to drop the temperature a little bit. As soon as the first crack's over, it usually takes around about 90 seconds from when you first hear the first crack. My missus thinks I'm bonkers for doing this, but it's got to be done, I'm afraid. As you can see, the coffee starts to turn a nice um, light brown colour now.
So we just leave the camera running um, until the coffee's finished. This is the the critical part of the roast, really. It's about a few minutes after the first crack has started and finished. You'll then get the second crack. Which is where most coffee beans are um, roasted to. By just hovering around the, the second crack. As soon as the second crack normally starts, or normally stops. Right, we're going to turn the uh, temperature down now. To about 231. To 2.30. I find it just gives the uh, coffee a bit more um, character and a nicer flavour if you uh, drop the temperature down a little bit after the first crack. Otherwise everything just happens too quickly. Then we'll start listening out for the second crack in a minute, which is more of a um, like a bubble you squeeze bubble wrap together. It's that kind of sound. Slightly different to the first crack. But we can see we've got a few little droplets of oil starting to come onto the, the beans now. So it's getting there or thereabouts. Well that bleep in there just tells you it's down to the last minute of the time that you uh, you set it for but looking at this it's going to be the 18 minutes is going to be there or thereabouts. Coming down to the end of the time, I'm just going to alter it now, just to stick another extra half a minute on there. Stick another half a minute on there. And now we can just start to hear the second crack starting. And a bit more oil coming out of the beans, so these are just about, just about done. And there we go. Now we're going to this automatic curling cycle for around about 10 minutes uh, till the temperature of the, the beans gets down to about 59. 
So we'll turn the camera off for now and then we'll, um, we'll have a look at the beans when they're finished. Well, we're just coming to the end of the cooling cycle now, we're at 61 degrees. It's taken 10 minutes to uh, cool the beans down. So another few seconds and it will just stop. Just like that. So considering where we started with the processed beans at the, that line there, you can see how much the beans have swollen. I'll say they've nearly trebled in size. So let's get these into the uh, colander. Freshly roasted coffee at home. So we've got another 250 grams here weighed out of old brown java, so we'll get those in. See what I mean about the uh, preheating the drum first? See, this is at the temperature it would have cooled down at. So you haven't got to spend that time getting the extra. 50 degrees up to start. So we're going to stick these in. Stick it on for another 18 minutes. Back up to 250. And start. See how it started there on 54. We'll cut, we'll cut the camera now. Um, I'll go and finish de chaffing these beans I've just roasted and then we'll have a look at what we've got. Right, we've just finished de chaffing them. This machine does collect the chaff in this chaff collector here, but you still get a few little bits on. But you can see these are spot on, really. But to get rid of the last of the chaff it's just as easy as keeping them in the colander and if you do it outside when there's a bit of a breeze if you do it from a bit of a height and you keep the beans in the bits of chaff will just blow away with the breeze being it beans it's so light so if you just do this a few times it will just get rid of those last bits of chaff so we're going to leave these just to finish cooling up. They're pretty cool already. We're just going to let them go cold before we um, bag them up. Freshly roasted coffee. One of the most rewarding things you can do if you if you like your coffee. If you can really get results that are as good as anything really. I used to spend about £22, £24 a month buying um, pre-roasted coffee from Clinton and Sons. And it's nice coffee, don't get me wrong, but £24 a month for a kilo is uh, pretty steep really. Which I've, I've worked out that if you buy one of these machines, uh, within say a year and a half, two years, if you drink a kilo of coffee a month, it will pay for itself on the money you've saved on the, on the uh, price of the green beans compared to the roasted beans because green beans are a fraction of the price really. You can buy them for under £10 a kilo whereas you know you're looking £24 a kilo or there or thereabouts so you've got at least a half price saving. So there we go, we'll have a look at these old brown java when they're finished.
Right, we've had just about 11 minutes and we're just getting to the temperature of 238. And just to show you the um, repeatability of this thing, I've written down every single bean I've ever roasted, how long it's taken, the temperature, whether it's nice or not, and quite a few pages here. But I've done rolled brown java before. So we should be getting the first crack in at 13 minutes. So let's check that out. Just let it go to 238 and then I'll turn the temperature down. First crack, just around 13 minutes of the. So it's pretty accurate, accurate machine, really. And we've got 238, so we'll drop the temperature down to 238. I don't like roasting them at the full 250. They can just roast really quick and I don't know. I prefer the um, the depth of flavour you get from dropping the temperature down as you go along. So we'll let this get down to about three and a half minutes. First crack should be over and done with by then. And as you can tell by the smoke bellowing out the window. We're, uh, we're getting there. Right, let's drop the temperature again. To 230. And we're getting some oil on the beans already. And again, the second crack just starting too, so you can see how different um, different beans roast slightly differently to each other. I mean, it's 15 minutes and they're virtually done. So there we go, two and a half minutes to go and that will do. Fifteen and a half minutes. And we've just started to get some oil, as you might be able to see. So we'll let this cool down and then we'll uh, have a look at what we've got. Here we are, some nice de-chaffed old brown java. Nice oily beans, lovely. Right, we're all done roasting for the day. Here's what we've got. We've got Sumatra Gagarang. If you can see those. Got my Vespresso South American blend. Shame you can't smell these, they smell really nice. A nice Brazilian single origin. A Guatemalan single origin. Some 
old brown java old school old brown java and a Colombian single origin still a tiny bit of chaff on there look so these are the results you can get with the genie So you've got coffee from all around the world, more or less. Right, that's going to wrap this video up. Thanks for watching and uh, tune in again. See if we can get some more coffee videos done. Thanks. Bye.